Hello everyone, here's another tricky um, grade A stroke A star differential equations uh, modelling question. Uh, this one's a tricky one that involves the use of partial fractions and the chain rule. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. It says uh, figure four shows a hemispherical bowl containing some water. At time t seconds, the height of the water h centimetres and the volume of the water is v centimetres cubed where v is equal to one third pi r squared h times by 30 minus h. Water is leaking from a hole in the bottom of the bowl. Given that dv by dt is equal to minus one over 10 v, show that dh by dt is equal to that expression there, five marks. Okay, now, as you probably know by now, the way that I like to uh, approach these videos is to start off by writing down what it is that I'm trying to find by using the chain rule. So <clears throat> are we looking to find an expression for dh by dt? So I'd like to start off by writing dh by dt <clears throat> is equal to dh over something times by something over dt. So I'm just writing down the chain rule. Then I say to myself, okay, what on earth could the something be? And in this case, the something could well be dv, which would make sense. Uh, especially as the question tells us that dv is equal to uh, minus 1 over 10v. So minus 1 over 10v is our dv by dt. Okay, that's perfect. Now, we now need to find an expression for dh by dv. So let's write down what our volume is. So our volume is 1 third uh, pi h squared times by 30 minus h. And if we expand that bracket, we get one third pi um, h squared times by 30 minus um, one third pi h cubed, one third pi h cubed, because we have the third uh, h squared times by the h. So therefore, I dv by dh is going to equal, uh, what is that going to equal? That is going to equal two thirds pi h times by 30 minus pi h squared. So we can simplify this down. So this is going to equal 20 pi h minus pi h squared. Okay, so 20 pi h minus pi h squared is our dv by dh. So we now need to take the reciprocal of that and put it back into here. So, so far, we've now got that our dh by dt is equal to dh by dv, which is going to be uh, 1 over this one. So, it's going to be 1 over 20 pi h minus pi h squared times by dv by dt, which is minus 1 over 10. And v, we know, is 1 third pi h squared, 1 third pi h squared times by 30 minus h. Okay, so quite a complicated looking thing there. Uh, but that nonetheless is our expression for dh by dt. Let's see what we can cancel out. Well, we've got a factor of pi there, pi there, and pi there. So pi is common to everything. So pi can go. We've got a factor of h here, and a factor of h squared there, and a factor of h squared there. So we've cancelled out one factor of h as well. So let's see what that gets us to. That gets us to 1 over uh, 20 minus h uh, times by minus 1 over 10 times by 1 third. And that's just going to be h times by 30 minus h. Let's just gather all that together over the one fraction. That goes to uh, minus h times by 30 minus h all over and we're going to have here uh, 10 times 3 is going to be 30 and that's going to be 30 and that is going to be 20 minus h and that is the result that we were aiming for minus h uh, 30 minus h over 30 times by 20 minus h so we can write as required you don't have to write that but i just like to write it as requ uh, required Okay, and that's our dh by dt. So that is part A done for five marks. Now, part B. Write down 
30 um, times by 20 minus h over h times by 30 minus h as a partial fraction. Okay, let's have a look at that next bit now. So in order to write this as a partial fraction, we're going to consider this as being 30 times by 20 minus h over h times by 30 minus h is equal to a over h plus b over 30 minus h. So we've just written it down <clears throat> as two fractions. I'm going to multiply everything by this here. So I get that 30 times 20 minus h is equal to a times by 30 minus h plus b times by h. So I've just multiplied everything by this denominator here. So I'm going to say now let h equals 0 in order to find out um, what a is. So when h is equal to 0, I'm going to have 30 times by 20 is going to equal 30a plus nothing. So 600 is equal to 30a. So a is equal to 600 divided by 30. And 600 divided by 30 is 20. So we found out that a is 20. I'm now going to say let h equal 30 in order to make this bracket go away so I can find out what b is. And that gives me 30 times by 20 minus 30 is equal to 0 plus 30b. 20 minus 30 is minus 10, so that's going to be minus 300 is equal to 30b. So therefore b is equal to minus 10. And I've now found out my a and my b. So that means that my fraction, my 30, 20 minus h over h times by 30 minus h can be written as 20 over h minus 10 over 30 minus h. And that is our um, partial fractions done for part b. So that's three marks. So we're eight marks into this question now. OK, now it says um, part C, it says given that um, H equals 10 when T equals zero, use your answers to part A and B to find the time taken for the height of the water to fall to five centimetres. Give your answer in uh, seconds to two decimal places. So to start part C off, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the differential equation that's given in part A, because it does say using the answers to part A and part B. And what we're going to do here is we're going to separate the variables. So we've got 30 and we have got 20 minus h. And in order to separate the variables, we're going to get everything that has a h on one side and everything that has a t on the other. So I'm just going to times by this and divide by this. I'm going to leave that minus there. And when I do that, I get 30, 20 minus h over h times by 30 minus h. Um, the integral of that with respect to h is equal to the integral of minus 1 with respect to t. So I've basically times by the reciprocal of this fraction to move it over to here, or I've, if you will, I've divided by that fraction, left the minus 1 there, and I've times by the dt. OK, now this is the reason why this is useful is because now we can employ the answer from part b. We know that this can be written... Uh, so this can be written as this. So we're now, having used the answer from part A, we're going to now also incorporate the answer from part B. So we're going to write down what we found it to be. And we found it to be, this is going to be the integral, therefore, of 20 over H minus 10 over 30 minus H dH is equal to the integral of minus 1 dT. So now it's time for us to integrate this. Now, when I integrate this, I find that I get um, 20 ln h minus 10 ln mod 30 minus h. But I need to divide by minus 1 from using the chain rule backwards. And that's going to equal minus t plus c. So this is going to go to 20 ln h plus, because a minus and a minus makes a plus, 10 ln mod 30 minus h 
equals minus t at c. Now there's, there's two ways that we can do this. Um, one of the ways is to um, find integrate between 5 and 10. We could do that. But what I'm going to do is, uh, having now found my general solution, remember that's the fancy way of saying where we don't know what c is, I'm now going to make use of my boundary condition, which is the fancy way of saying we're told that h is equal to 10 when t is equal to 0. I'm going to sub in my boundary condition into my general solution in order to work out the constant so that I can then have my particular solution. So let me do that now. Let's have a look at this. So let's sub this in. Here we go. So we have got now uh, h is equal to 10. So that's going to give us 20 ln 10 plus 10 ln 30 minus 10 is equal to 0 plus c. So 20 ln 10 plus 10 ln 20 equals c. So we found out what C is, so now we've got um, our particular solution. And let's look and see what our particular solution is going to be. It's going to be this with this C added on. So the rather precarious looking 20 ln H plus 10 ln uh, 30 minus H. And then we've got plus 20 ln 10 and plus 10 ln 20. Um, all of that over there. Oh, actually, we should have this on this side. So let's let's put our equals there because that's our left hand side there. So that equals, and then that's our c there, and then we're going to have minus t. So there we go. So all I've done is I've replaced the c with the constant that we found um, it to be in the previous bit of the equation. But apart from that, that's my general solution. And this is my particular solution, so PS. OK, so now we just need to sub in. Um, oh, we now need to say it says um, find the time taken for the height of the water to fall to five. So we want to find out what is T when H is equal to five. So it's time to sub these in now. So that's going to give us 20 ln five plus 10 ln 30 minus five. Um, is equal to 20 ln 10 plus 10 ln 20 minus t. So 20 ln 5 is, turns out to be 32.1887. 10 ln 25 also turns out to be 32.1887 when we put it in the calculator. Um, 20 ln 10 is 40. 6.0517, 10 ln 20 is 29.9573, uh, then we've got our minus t, and that's a plus. So we just literally add those two numbers together. Uh, no, actually, what we're going to do is add those two numbers together, take away that, take away that, and then move the t over there. So when we do those two numbers added together, take away those two numbers, move the t over to the other side, and that gives us t is equal to 11.63. Uh, find the time in seconds to two decimal places. So that is seconds, and that is to two decimal places. And that is our final answer for that differential equation uh, question uh, using partial fractions. I hope that you found that helpful, and I will see you in the next video.